The transition to the information age is only hastening. Some fundamental economic relationships, like the cost of protection services and the return on investment from violence, have been drastically changed. And governments, because they're force, and because force is violence, their business model is under increasing pressure. This is because violence is a lot less profitable in the information age. In fact, in many cases, the return on investment is even negative. Because they know nothing besides violence, these obsolete monopolies will likely cause significant amounts of collateral damage. The key is to not be this collateral damage, to somehow avoid being squashed by the collapsing carcasses of these giant organizations and institutions. So when considering your life hedge, there's only really one area that I think will qualify. North America, it's going to be ground zero for the currency collapse. And with 45 million people on welfare who need 1,500 calories a day and 90 million guns, I'm not sure this is the place you'll want to be. I would rather be watching it on TV than at my front doorstep. On the other hand, Europe, Europe has similar problems with bankrupt governments, insolvent banks, a stagnant economy, and lots of immigration issues with racial undertones. This is compounded with aging populations and declining birth rates. Africa is a bottomless quagmire for capital. Sure, Cape Town might be nice, but they still have running blackouts and power outages. Sure, Cape Town may be nice, but it's just not my cup of tea. Antarctica? Now that's sparsely populated, but I don't like the cold and I don't want a pet penguin. Asia is hot, humid, densely populated, and they don't really speak a language that I understand, and I don't look like any of them. Sure, it's an engine for economic growth. Don't get me wrong, Hong Kong is nice and Singapore is beautiful, if you don't mind being flogged for spitting on the street. But as hard as I try, I'm just not going to fit in there. That leaves South America, with my favorite countries being Chile, Argentina, Brazil, and Uruguay. For example, Uruguay is the size of England, but only 3.5 million people and 11 million cows. Chile just surpassed the United States in the Economic Freedom Index. So their economy is off and rolling, along with Brazil and Argentina. These commodity powerhouses also are very sparsely populated. For example, they only have 75% the population density as Mexico, the United States, and Canada. And if you've been to Canada or some of the parts of the United States up near there, you know that there's not very many people in a lot of land. Additionally, unlike the United States, the population in South America are usually centered in the large population centers, such as Santiago, Buenos Aires, Rio de Janeiro, or Sao Paulo. This is where La Estancia de Cafajate comes in. It's located in the middle of nowhere, in northwest Argentina. I find this to be particularly attractive because it is in the middle of nowhere. That's part of what you want when you have this type of turbulence. Additionally, I think that the risk with La Estancia is largely gone now. You see, about 175 out of the 360 lots have been sold. That means that they have enough cash in the bank and no debt, and they're going to be able to finish all of the facilities. Additionally, the community is really starting to take place, and you won't be able to find anything like it in the world. And it's really starting to speed up. In March, when I was there, they sold five lots at the big event. In October, they sold 15. So I think it's going to be snapped up pretty quickly and then become a fairly exclusive community. But buying foreign real estate can be a fairly daunting option. Even though I'm trained in the law, I still run into those questions. What are the laws? How can you take title? Can you use foreign entities? And other things of that nature. And as I was leaving La Estancia de Cafajate, Juan Esteban Romero, he mentioned to me, you know, you should bring some of your friends down here and you can earn a commission. And, you know, earning a commission, it's fairly common in the real estate industry. But I have a lot of other things going on, and I'm successful with it, and so I don't really have time to track down uh, whether or not I'd earn a commission on these things. However, I still thought it was an interesting proposal, and so I began thinking about how could I 
add some value to this transaction to really help people overcome the same problems I have and in the process perhaps earn that commission. So here's my buddy from law school, Bill Rounds, and he co-authors How to Vanish with me. And I thought, you know, if I earn the commission from this, and if you make sure that I get it during the negotiations, then you're going to need help with your legal services. And that's exactly the type of work that Bill does. So I'd like to invite Bill to talk a little bit about the legal services that he can do, and that I'll pay for as long as I'm guaranteed to get the commission from the sale. Hey Bill, so I was hoping that you could give them a brief background on yourself and then what you do in your law practice and how that's particularly suited to be extremely advantageous to them in this type of a transaction. Hi everybody, my name is Bill Rounds and I'm a California attorney and my law practice revolves around privacy, privacy issues and a lot of the legal tools to help people protect that privacy and along with that it includes things like business entity formation and transactions, a lot of estate planning, and even international transactions. I've actually spent a few years living in South America, and I'm fluent in Spanish, so I've helped a lot of my U.S.-based clients uh, do business transactions in South America, things like setting up business entities, or operating business internationally, or other business transactions. It's those kinds of abilities in the context contacts that I've made in several different countries that make transacting in South America for me a lot easier and it makes my clients a little bit more comfortable, a little, more, a little bit more confident that things are going to go smoothly with their, with their business. I can set up the proper U.S. entities to hold foreign real estate in a place like Argentina. I can also provide the documents for the entity in Spanish that the Argentinian government needs in order to do that. And I can help facilitate any kind of transaction or communication that needs to be done with the Argentinian government. Plus, I can do it all in a way that integrates perfectly with any existing estate planning or other kind of business planning that people already have in place. If you think that's the kind of thing that you would consider or might be interesting to you, feel free to contact me to get a little bit more information uh, and to get a little bit more details about how to do this. Thanks, Bill. I hope you found this interview with the Romeros, with Doug Casey, and Bill Rounds to be helpful. Argentina is a wonderful country, and it has a great standard of living. The current financial and political situation throughout the world can add a lot of stress to someone's life if they're unprepared. And remember, when the time to perform has come, the time to prepare is gone. Having your life hedge in place will not really matter until it's the only thing that matters. But when you take action based on correct theory, then you're prepared. And even though things will come down the pipeline that aren't that enjoyable, it won't really make that much of a difference on your daily lifestyle. So I recommend that you come visit La Estancia de Cafajate. The next big event is in March. And every conversation that I had down there was extremely enjoyable. And I can recommend Bill if you do any type of business in South America and need legal work done. But more importantly, don't just sit idly by hoping that everything's going to work out. Analyze the situation, weigh the risks and the probability that they will occur, and the gravity of what will happen depending on how you've prepared yourself for them. And then take action that you feel is appropriate. If you think that La Estancia isn't for you, that's fine. But if you find that you do want to pursue that, come visit in March. And if you decide to buy a lot, remember to look us up. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it to be of value. This was Trace Mayer from Rundagold.com.